Now, please don't get me wrong. We've got more than enough supplies at home, more than enough. But I do admit to feeling a little bit stressed over the last few weeks about getting those Tesco's home delivery slots. You see, we don't have a car and we don't live that near a choice of supermarkets. So they've become quite important for me to get hold of one now and again. And I have been a little bit anxious around that sometimes. But we've never gone short. Equally, I've been worried about our children. Have they got all they need? Have our grandchildren got everything that they need to flourish? Silly really, since none of us has gone short apart from anything, apart from the odd box of eggs or packet of flour. And we can live with that without those, can't we? But our fear in these days is nothing, nothing compared to those who know the anxiety of literally not knowing where the next meal is coming from. But at least I've tasted just a tiny taste of having to take the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, a little bit more seriously in this time. So let's look at each line of the phrase and take it one by one. First of all, give us. This is a reminder that our lives are not our own. Like bread, they're gifts. Just as the Hebrews in the wilderness would have starved without God's provision of manna, we simply wouldn't survive without these simple gifts. And recognising God as provider calls us to make this bold, insistent prayer, Lord, give us. Of course, in our culture, we don't like to think of being dependent on God or anyone else or anything come to that. It's seen as a sign of weakness. Yet in times such as these, our self-created illusion of self-sufficiency comes crashing down around us. And in solidarity with our global neighbours who've known this all along, who are in dire poverty their whole lives, we can now a little bit more easily recall our need of God and our need of each other, which we see in your stories about shopping for each other, looking after your neighbours and dropping off supplies to each other. Stanley Howas tells of a group of students who were on a retreat at a Trappist monastery. At one of the supposedly silent evening meals, one of them blurted out, hey, did we make this bread or did somebody else make it for us? And a Trappist monk wisely just said to both, yes. It is yes to both, isn't it? It's yes to God and yes to each other for our lives, for our nourishment and for bread. So let's take the next word, bread. Any notion that Christianity is otherworldly or high and holy or heavenly is dead and buried by the time we get to this line, give us this day our daily bread. To ask for bread reminds us that we're people with flesh and skin and bones. We have a body that needs bread to live. And we must ask for the most basic things that matter. Centuries back, Gregory of Nicaea pointed out that the Lord's Prayer only allows us to ask for bread. He said no herds or cattle, no silken fine robes, no prominent position, just bread. We may ask only for bread. The rest, he says, is surplus. Of course, as always in the Bible, there's always a deeper layer to any narrative and there's certainly a deeper layer to the meaning of the word bread. The story of the feeding of the 5,000 tells us that for Jesus, says Stanley Howas, hunger is always an affront to the kingdom of God. God loves to feed us through Jesus who on that day, in that story, says, get them something to eat. Now, I was raised in a home where all visitors, expected or unexpected, were offered something to eat and drink on their arrival. 
it might be something simple like home baked scones or my mum's great tea loaf that we still make today, my sisters and I. Now my mum, although a highly intelligent woman, left school when she was 14 because of the wartime and she was no proclaimed academic theologian. But she sensed that offering food was a spiritual service and a sign of the kingdom that she had promised to live by. And in the Bible, the kingdom of God coming will be experienced as a meal for the hungry. Israel will meet its Messiah, says Isaiah, at the table. And Jesus eats with anyone who will welcome his company. Anyone. Immediately before Jesus feeds the 5,000, he's actually immediately before that teaching about the kingdom of God. So what happens next in that narrative where he physically does that is a sign that all are welcome and there's enough to go round. Ultimately, of course, the bread we know is the sign of our Lord Jesus Christ, his life, his death and his resurrection. Generally, Christians celebrate this by sharing the bread physically during worship. In our tradition, we break bread at every meal and in our daily lives, in our daily actions. Either way, eating bread together expresses how Christ is breaking into our world as he reclaims it as his own. And when we want to meet God, Christians don't tend to go rushing up a mountain, maybe occasionally they do, but generally we don't rush away from the world. We gather to share bread because that's where Jesus is usually choosing to meet us in the hearts of our daily lives that are so dependent on bread. And then there's this word daily. Give us today our daily bread. Back to those Tesco slots. We've not run out of anything much, but we've been tempted to build up reserves just in case we did. I've been tempted to do that and I have built up a few reserves. So there's something extraordinarily brave and daring to pray. Please Lord, give me just enough for today. Stanley Howes says, change the word daily to sufficient or enough. To pray for more, he says, tempts us to try to live differently from those seeking to live by God's gracious will and promise. It would tempt us to hoard, he says, to try and wrestle back control from the giver of gifts, to put ourselves back in charge as we stockpile. Instead, he, the Lord's Prayer insists, we must daily trust in the God who daily reaches out to us and provides what we need. Now this prayer moves us to honest confession. For let's be honest, in our culture, enough is rarely the problem. Most of us get sick and ill from relentless overconsumption, from too much bread if you like. We are rich people in the West in serious trouble. And someone in a faraway city slum who has to make every scrap of bread matter, will pray this prayer, this line, very differently to how we pray it. So asking God for enough bread is also to say to God, give us enough, but no more than that, no more. Help us to say no, Lord, when we go past enough. And perhaps this prayer will help us sense a bit more intelligently what we really need over what our commodity-obsessed culture keeps telling us that we need. And then there are these two little words, us and ours. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread. Those are communal words, not individualistic words. It's our bread, not mine. Bread is a communal product. Like we pray 
our Father, we share our Father, so we share our daily bread. In the Lord's Prayer narrative, no one ever eats alone. And if bread is a communal product, then bread is also a communal responsibility. Listen to what Basil the Great says. The bread that is spoiling in your house belongs to the hungry. The shoes that are mildewing under your bed belong to those that have none. The clothes stored in your trunk belong to those who are naked. The money that depreciates in your treasury, treasury belongs to the poor. And with a tweak or two, don't you think, our friend Basil the Great could have been preaching that because it was part of a sermon to us in 2020, surely. You see, bread is not ours to hoard and we pervert God's gifts when we do that. And to pray, give us this day our daily bread, demands that we examine our lives, that we repent of hoarding, and that ultimately we readmit our responsibility for each other. And in this simple request to God, we relearn that we must offer our lives to each other. Isn't it just incredible, don't you think, that in the end, salvation comes down to something as basic as bread. And as we go deeper through it, through this prayer, and as it ever hits closer to home, as it has done this morning, we're realising what an adventurous, challenging, demanding prayer the Lord's Prayer really is. But of course, our Lord Jesus always knew that. He knew it all along. And that's why he called us to pray the Lord's Prayer. To be brave and to be in the adventure we call discipleship as we journey through the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray that prayer with me now? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.